Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your rear brake pads and your rear brake rotors on a 2016 Scion IM. First thing we need to do is take this caliper off by taking out these two little caliper slide pin bolts. You can grab a 14 millimeter socket or wrench. And I'm just gonna zip these off real quick with the little Milwaukee. That's what they look like. And then we should be able to pry the caliper off. Now it might be a little snug. This is also your parking brake. So just make sure that your parking brake is off. Otherwise you'll have a really hard time taking this off. And we just pulled off one of these little pad spreaders here. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that aside. We might need to reuse these. I'm gonna take this one off here as well. These are just little V springs that go into the end of the pad. All right, and then we can pull these old pads out. You can see that they are very worn down. This one out here too. And you see this is the one that has the little noisemaker or squealer. It's on the uh, the bottom of the inside pad. And since we're changing the rotors, we're also going to take off this caliper bracket. If you're not changing the rotor, you can leave this part on. But to remove this bracket, we need the same 14 millimeter socket here on these caliper bracket bolts. Now when you loosen this, it's a good idea to hold this with one hand while you take these out. Otherwise this will drop to the ground. And then we can just push the caliper back a little bit and take this bracket off. Now, in case you're wondering about the caliper here, I have it just kind of sitting here. I'm not worried about dangling this from this brake line because this is also supported by the cable that engages the parking brake. So we're not doing any damage there by letting that sit like that. The rear calipers are also super light, so it's really not putting any pressure at all on this brake line. Now we can take off the rotor. And if it's stuck on there, I have a special tool for that. This is called the Rotor Remover 9000, and it's really good at taking off stuck brake rotors. You just have to give it a little tap right here and here. It'll usually just pop right off. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you see the rotor has two threaded holes right here. If this is really stuck on there, you can also get a couple bolts that will fit into those threaded holes and turn them in almost like a force screw or a press. It'll pop it off the hub. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is push the caliper piston back in even before we put the new rotor on just because we've got a little bit more room to work right here. Now, before we push the caliper piston back in, it's a good idea to take a look here at your master cylinder and make sure that the fluid level is low enough so that when you're pushing it backwards up through the cylinder, it's not gonna overflow and make a big mess. I've tried to clean off the side here to show this and I'm at a little bit of an incline, but our brake fluid is low enough. This line is the maximum, that's the minimum down there and we're actually right in between. So if I push the caliper piston back in, it's just gonna bring that fluid level up a little bit. But the important thing is that it's not gonna overflow and make a big mess. Also, a lot of people ask me if I need to remove this cap when pushing the caliper piston back in and you don't. Any air that's trapped inside there can compress and or easily escape. So we don't have to worry about taking that lid off when doing this. Brake fluid does absorb moisture and that's what causes it to degrade. It's hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture. Even the moisture in the air, that changes its boiling point and causes it to degrade. So I usually only remove this if I can't see on the side or if I need to add some brake fluid. But uh, because we can see that that one's low enough, we're gonna go ahead and push that caliper piston back in now. And this is the little caliper wind back tool that I'm gonna use. Let me show you here's what it looks like this little caliper wind back kit i got that on amazon i'll get a link for you in the description on this one but uh, it comes with both right hand and left hand threads so we're going to be turning this one back in clockwise so i'm choosing this one here the right side which is the right hand thread and that's what the little face of the caliper looks like it's got these little notches just find one that matches up in our kit where it was e but it just fits right in there into the face of the caliper and then we just need to turn that clockwise as we push it back in before i do that i'm also going to spray this with a little bit of wd-40 just to try to break this boot free from this little caliper piston. A lot of times this rubber boot will stick to the caliper piston and you can even damage that when you're turning these back in. But let's go ahead and get this tool going in here. So you basically just line it up like that and just turn this sleeve out. It's like a little collar or a sleeve. And then what we need to do is just turn that. And then as you turn it, you're gonna need to back this collar out a little bit as you go to continue to tighten that. You can see that boot's kind of bunching up and that's it. That's as far as it will turn. Back that out. 
I also want to point out that when it's turned all the way back in, you'll notice that this right here lines up. That's because there's a little part on the back of the pad, this little part right here. Otherwise, this will get a little bit jammed up and it may not even fit back on. Now, before I put on the new rotor, I'm just going to take a minute and hit this with the wire wheel and try to knock off some of this rust that's on this hub. That will help us remove the brake rotor or make it so it doesn't get stuck. If you're going to use a wire wheel, just make sure that you do wear some safety glasses. Okay, that's good enough. And I'm also just gonna brush a little bit of this anti-seize on the face of this hub, primarily around this shoulder because that's what usually tends to grab onto those rotors and keep them from coming off. And just kind of wipe off any excess. A little bit on this stuff goes a long way, so don't get too carried away with it. Now you can see the new rotor. These are packed in some sort of an oil that prevents them from rusting during shipment and while they're sitting on the shelf. So we're just gonna hit that with some brake parts cleaner before we put it on. Just need to make sure we clean all that oil off. All right, now we're gonna get our caliper bracket ready to go back on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is pop out these slide pins and clean them and re-grease them. Oh boy, this one's really stiff. Yeah, this one is really stiff. This one does not want to come out. Wow. Talk about a stuck slide pin. That thing was really stuck. And I don't think it's the boot that's really swollen. It's just the grease. Look, this is really gummy, really sticky. So when these are really stuck like that, I like to take a little bit more time and clean out these recesses before I re-grease these and put them back in. We're going to go ahead and pull the boot out. Just little rubber boots that just kind of re recess into that little spot right there and they'll just pull right out. I'm going to do the same thing. Pull out this slide pin here. This one is also really, really sticky, really stuck in there. You see that? It's just barely pulling out. This one has that little rubber boot at the end as well. A lot of times cars will only have these on one, either the top or the bottom, but let's pull this boot out here too. But if you look closely, you can see all that stuff is really sticky. Makes me wonder if somebody used the wrong type of grease or if it just got really, really hot. But uh, either way, we'll get these all cleaned up. But I pulled those boots out so that we can get in here with some brake clean and brush that out and get this really clean. That's why I've also got the cardboard down here so that we don't make a huge mess. So let me show you this brush kit that I'm using here. So I picked up this brush kit a while back. This is the perfect size and you can tell that this is the one I use a lot, but this is uh, perfect for calipers, but it comes in lots of different sizes and different materials. I'll get a link to this one in the description. I had actually been looking for a caliper brush for a long time or a kit like that and finally found this one and it works great. We can just get in there and twist this around. Do the same thing on this one. And then we'll just dump that out. That thing works amazing. Yeah, just look at all that debris that we got out of there. That's awesome. I don't know if you can see in there, but these are nice and clean now. Before we put the slide pins in, I'm just gonna pump off the brake hardware here. And these just use a flathead screwdriver. See how these clips are different? See that little part right there? There is different than right there. So make sure you keep track on which side is on which or which side is at the top. Luckily our replacements also have that same difference. So we know that this one goes on this side, this one goes on that side. Now before we put those on though, we need to clean this up and clean this surface under those clips to make sure that they sit nice and flush. Now for that, I'm just gonna use a little wire wheel again and just remember to wear some safety glasses. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of this caliper grease underneath those clips. Now this is the not the high temp stuff, but this just is really just to provide a little coating underneath to prevent any rusting or any corrosion underneath here that would cause those brackets to push up. This is the same grease I'm gonna use on the slide pins. Like you can throw a little bit in there, but I'm gonna make sure we get uh, plenty on the slide pin before we put that back in. All right, and then we can put the new clips in and we just draw, line those up and snap them in. Well, those are not real tight. Sometimes they'll snap in. These ones are not snapping in here. Same with this side here. Those will just snap in place. 
These are not snapping in for some reason. These are not sitting as nice and tight as I usually like, but looks like they're gonna work. All right, and then we can clean these slide pins here too. And just some brake cleaner and just usually you can wipe them off. Mostly just getting all that grease residue off of there. That looks okay. Let's clean this other one here too. And those will work. Okay, and then we need to put these little rubber boots back in. And you can see just this little shoulder. Just kind of bunch that up and stuff it in right there. And that'll stay. Same on this side here. Easy enough. And then we're just going to grease these up. Just grease that up really well like that. And just pop that back in. Same with this one here. And just put that back in. Just kind of twist it and spin it as you go. It'll kind of help disperse the grease. And then as you push them in, you kind of have to squeeze this little rubber boot right here, which will burp any air that's trapped inside. See like that right there, it's pushing back out. We have either too much grease or we have some trapped air. Sometimes you can get the air out just by pushing and squeezing on the boot here. Let me see if I can do that. There we go. Now I had to pull the boot back out a little bit and squeeze it. And then you hear that little pop sound, that's air popping out. You need to make sure that you get the air out of there because otherwise this will push out and cause your brake pads to drag. We're good now. Now usually I would just put this on once I have the clips in, but this clip is kind of loose for some reason. So I think I'm going to load this up with the pads first before I put it on. So this is a new grease I'm going to use by Permatex. It's the Silicone Ceramic Extreme. It's a much higher temp than that caliber grease that I'm usually using. And see this is that orange stuff. It's real sticky. And this is what I'm going to use on the back of the brake pads. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of this on the back of the pad, but because this is a much higher temp, it's not gonna melt off as quickly as some of that other stuff that I've used in the past. And you can see I'm putting a little bit here at the ends. That's where this is going to slide inside that retainer. And I just wanna make sure that that doesn't get, get bound up or hang up in there. So you can see that these have the little spring. You can see that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm putting this in because these, this just doesn't fit really tight in there for some reason. All right, that's in there, whoops. Okay, and same with the outside pad here. Just kind of press that in and line it up like so. So now this is loaded and ready to go back on. All right, now our bracket's ready to go back on. I'm just gonna grab some of this here, Hermatech medium strength blue thread locker. And I'm just gonna put a little bit here on these caliper bracket bolts. It doesn't take much, just a little dab or two on each one, like so. And then I usually just kind of roll that around to spread that. That's good enough. All right, so here we kind of need to push the caliper out of the way while we come up here and put the bracket with the pads in. Just need to do that without knocking them out if we can. There we go. And then I'm gonna get these bolts started. And we'll just get those snugged up. And we can torque these caliper bracket bolts to 42 foot pounds. This is the gear wrench 85062 torque wrench that I'm using. I really like it. Now we can put these little V springs back in and these are tricky sometimes if they're really strong or new, they'll push out and they'll push the pads out so far that uh, they'll just fall right onto the floor. So just, you might have to use one hand here while you put these V springs in and they just go into the little holes in the top edge of the pad. And again, you can just kind of hold those pads in with one hand while you put them on. Because I'm reusing these ones, they're not pushing out too hard, so it's really not that bad. The kit didn't come with new ones, so I have to reuse these. And then we can put the caliper back on and just kind of line everything up, but that looks good. Sometimes you have to pull these slide pins in, but that looks good. And then we can put in the caliper slide pin bolts here. Get those started. And we'll get those snugged up. We can torque this to 25 foot-pounds. I didn't mention it when you loosen these or tighten these you might need a little open end wrench a 17 millimeter on here on the slide pin because sometimes that will spin while you're tightening it and that's it now it's important before you drive away you need to go step on the brake pedal several times pushing the caliper piston back out pressing those pads up against the rotor where they need to be now when you do this don't press the pedal all the way to the floor just press it down about halfway several times until it feels firm and you should be good to go and don't forget to double check the fluid level in your master cylinder make sure that that's all topped off and good to go as well i hope you 
you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up some of these parts and tools as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck. Thank you.